All right, so this video we're going to look at uh, functions, transformations, and we'll take a look at symmetry, odd, and even functions. So the first thing, let's look at how we move functions around. Okay, so if we just have a function y equals uh, f of x, all right, then if we have y equals f of x minus c, that shifts the graph c units to the right. If we have f of x plus c, that shifts the graph c units to the left. f of x minus c shifts its c units down. f of x plus c shifts c units up. Now, notice, notice in, the, in, the, in these first four that we looked at, the difference in them, notice adding and subtracting the C. See how it's in the parentheses here? When it's in the parentheses like that, that moves it left and right. When it's outside the parentheses like these two, that's going to move it up and down. And then we have Y equals negative F of X. That reflects the graph about the X axis, so it just kind of it flips it down. And then we have Y equals A times F of X. Well, this number that we're multiplying to the function, if it's larger than 1, it's going to stretch the graph. And if it's between 0 and 1, it's going to shrink the graph. All right. So that might be kind of hard for you to, might be hard for you to visualize that. So let's go ahead and look at some examples, okay, of how we move these graphs around. So this right here, this is, you know, th this is a good way that I know how to show it to you. I think it's easier for you to see it if I do it with this software here. So if we just have our graph f of x, oh, and before, before I get to that, I want to show you this. When you're, when you're moving functions around and everything, you need, it's helpful to know the basic functions or what you might have heard it called the parent functions. All right, so here's the, here's the basic function f of x equals some constant. Remember y equals a number that's just a horizontal line. And then you've got f of x equals x and f of x equals mx plus b. That's just the equation of a straight line. Now over here, this right here is just the absolute value of x, and we can move this thing up and down, left and right, and same thing here, f of x squared, and then we've got the square root of x, and then you've got x cubed, and then you've got the cube root of x, and then this one's the greatest integer function, step function. Okay, so these are the basic graphs, and then you know what might happen. Like, say you have f of x squared, f of x equals x squared here. Well, what if you have x minus one in parentheses squared? How do we move that graph? Or if you have x squared and then plus one, but the plus one is not in the squared part, what is that going to do to the graph? Well, that's what I'm going to show you. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So let's just start out with the basic function f of x equals x squared. Okay, that's the, that's the basic function, f of x equals x squared. And you can do these with any of them. We, we could have let this be the absolute value of x, or we could let it be the square root of x, or the cube root of x, or x cubed. Doesn't matter. It's, it's you just t you're taking this basic function here and we're going to move it around. So, what if we have f of x minus two? All right. So, what does that do to the graph? Well, you can see here that the f of x minus two. See the f of x minus two. What did that do? It moved this graph two units to the right. Okay, that was the minus 2. And notice how the x minus 2, it's in parentheses squared. All right, now look, we can change this to plus. So what do you think it's going to do if we have f of x plus 2? And the x plus 2 is in the parentheses. 
Well, let's hit enter. Watch this sign here. It's going to change to a plus and then look and see where the graph is. And see what that did? That shifted the graph two units to the left. Okay. Now, let's do the same thing, but this time, now notice when I had the plus two and the minus two that moved it left and right when it was inside the parentheses here. And then also this X plus two, all of that was squared. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I put say minus three here and notice this is outside of the parentheses. Now watch how this changes. Okay and then look at the graph. Now see what that did? See this minus three, it's now, it's not inside that squared part, it's just x squared and then the minus three. And what does that do? That shifted the graph three units down. All right, now what if I come up here and I change it to plus? Well, watch, this is gonna change to a plus here and then what do you think the graph's gonna do? That's right, it moves three units upward. Okay, all right. Now let's get rid of that and let's put a negative sign in front of the f of x. Okay, so we've taken care of left, right, up, and down. Now let's put the negative in front. So what do you think it's gonna do to the graph? Let's see. It just, that's what I, remember what, we, what, what I said earlier? It reflects it about the x-axis, so it just flips it. And see how the negative is out in front of the x squared. All right. All right, so let's look at this. What if we put a 2 in front? Okay, so let's just hit enter and see what happens. All right, so, so this is what it does. See, I've got 2 times my function, or two times my function, and it stretches it. So, so you can see here on the, on the parent function, the x squared, let's just look here at one. See at one, see how it took this point and it stretched it up here to two? So it's basically like what you have here on the parent function, when this y is one, well, if you're stretching it, we're multiplying by 2 to stretch it. So you see the y value here? Well, 2 times 1 is 2. And then let's go out here at 2. If I take the 2 and I multiply it, well, let's see, where are we? Uh, let's see, 2. And we're here at 4. See how the y value is 4? Okay. See, this, remember, the green one is the original function. It's the parent function. So if I have a value of 4 and I'm stretching it by a factor of 2, well, what's 2 times 4? That's 8. Well, let's, let's, let's pull this down. And you see there, at x equal 2, the parent function is at a y value of 4. Well, if I'm stretching it by a factor of 2, well, 2 times the 4 here, look at there, that move that stretches it up to eight. All right. So when you're stretching, when you're multiplying by a number larger than one, what is it doing? It's making the graph more narrow. Okay. Now, what if, what if I did multiplied by 0.25? That's a number between zero and one. What did we say that do, it does? It shrinks it, right? So let's hit the enter. And you see that it makes it wider. Now this one will be a little more difficult to see, but um, you see here at one, okay, at a y. Well, let's let's see. Let's go over here to two. Yeah, two will be easier to see. So see here the parent function, which is the green function, okay. See at x equal two, we have a y value of four. Well. We're shrinking it by a factor of 0.25. Well, what's 4 times 0.25? That's 1. See how we go get to a y value of 1? So that's what it does. It shrinks the graph. It makes it wider. All right. And then also we can do 
this. Let's do minus one, and then let's come out here and do plus three. So what is that going to do? Well, we've got several things going on here, don't we? You can see here, this inside the parentheses, that's going to do what? That's going to move it one unit to the right, and then the plus three outside is going to move it three units up. So let's look at that. And there it is. See, it moved it one unit to the right and three units up. And look, look how the function looks. See x minus 1, how that's in the parentheses, and then plus 3, that's outside. And, and let me also show you this, how I'll change it back in just a minute. But I want you to see that you can also do this with square root. So watch, it's just going to change this graph, this green one, to this basic square root function. And watch. See, it's the same thing. See, this time the x minus 1, it's underneath the square root, and then the plus 3 is outside. So it shifts this graph, this green one, one unit to the right, and then up three units. All right? That's all that's going on. And, and the same thing would uh, do if I did absolute value. Let me see. I think, yeah. And see, there's absolute value. See how it does the same thing, okay? You just graph the basic function, the parent function, and then you just move it, okay? So let's change it back to x squared. So there we are. Now, what if, what if I had something like this? Say plus 2, plus 2, and then let's do minus 1. And then let's come up here and put a negative in front. So what is that going to do? Well, let's see. Is it going to move it left two units, down one, and then flip it? Let's see. There you go. See, it moved it to the left two units, down one, and it flipped it because of the negative. And then watch what happens if I put, say, like a four, a negative four in front. Watch how narrow this is going to get. You see that? So, it, you know, you can, you can combine these translations, okay? You, you, can, you can translate this thing, trans, or the transformations. You can do multiple, multiple ones at one time, okay? So now, now that you've got an idea of what all this looks like, let's take a look at some more examples. All right, so some more examples. So let's see what we've got here. It says write the equation of each graph after the indi indicated transformations. So they're giving us the graph y equals square root of x. So we're not graphing it or anything. That's what I just showed you how to graph it. Graph it. I think it's easier for you to see it like that. They're just wanting us to write down what the function would look like. Okay, so the graph of this is translated three units downward. So, so what would that look like? All right, so that is going to give us what? Y equals, now three units downward, so that's going to be square root of X and then the minus 3 because it's moving downward, and that would not be underneath the square root. Okay, as you saw previously when we were graphing those things. So this would be your answer. And what about this one? The graph y equals x squared is translated 7 units to the left. All right, so let's move it 7 units to the left. So that's going to be y equals, so moving left and right, that number's going to be inside the parentheses there. So that's going to be x. Now, is it going to be plus or minus? Well, I'm going to the left, so that's going to be plus 7. Okay. Seems like it's backwards when you're moving it left and right, doesn't it? Seems like if you're moving to the left, you might think that it's a minus instead of a plus. But remember, 
Remember this up here, x minus c moves it to the right, x plus c moves it to the left. And so this would be your answer. What about this? The graph of y equals square root of x is stretched by a factor of 3, translated 5 units upward, then reflected in the x-axis. All right, so that's going to be y equals, uh, let's see, that's going to be a stretch by a factor of 3, so that's going to be 3 times the square root of x. Okay. Uh, translated 5 units upward, so there's our plus 5, and then reflected in the x-axis. So that means we're going to have a negative in front. And so that would be your answer right there. And then how about this one? The graph of y equals absolute value of x is reflected in the x-axis, stretched by a factor of 3, then translated 7 units to the right and 9 units upward. All right, so y equals... All right, so it's reflected about the x-axis and stretched by a factor of 3. So that's negative 3 times the absolute value of x, right? But is it just the absolute value of x? Uh, no, it's translated 7 units to the right. So to the right, that's going to be what? Minus 7, and then 9 units upward, so plus 9. And there's your answer right there. All right. Okay, so now let's look at this. Let's look at odd and even functions. So this is helpful when you're graphing stuff. Uh, so we can determine if a function's odd or even. Uh, so if a function is even, we've got f of negative x is equal to f of x. And if a function is odd, then f of negative x is equal to negative x. And I've got, we've got some examples here. I'm going to show you how to figure that out. It's basically what you're doing is you're just evaluating your, well, let me erase that. You're evaluating f of negative x, and then you've got to see, do I get f of x or do I get negative f of x? Now, I want to show you just real quick an odd and even function that's graphed. So here we have an odd, I mean an even function. And I can't remember if I said earlier an even function. I don't, I can't remember what I said, but uh, an even function is symmetrical about the y-axis. I, I think I might have said x. If I did, that's wrong. It's, it's symmetrical about the y-axis. Okay. All right. So here's a function. This is a function f of x equals x squared. Okay, and this is an even function, and you can see how it's a, it's symmetrical about the y-axis. This this side over here, if you flip it over this side, it'll land over here. Okay, it's it's a mirror image, and then an odd function is symmetrical about the origin. Okay, there's a there's an odd function f of x equals x cubed. It's symmetrical about the origin. See, if we take this and we flip it down like this, and then we flip it across here like this, okay, so you, you flip it across this one, and then you flip it across this, and it'll land over here. Or you could take this and rotate it 180 degrees, and it'll land on that, okay, but that's an odd function. So it, it's helpful to know if it's odd or even. Makes a little can make it easier to graph, especially if you get when you get into the higher mass. You know, if you have to take calculus or anything, though that really comes in handy. Odd and even, because some of those graphs get real nasty. And if it's, you know, if you can determine if it's odd or even, you can just graph half of it and then, you know, reflect it. All right. So here. We want to determine whether each function is odd, even, or neither. All right. So, well, just like this says up here, we've got to figure out what f of negative x is. This, see how the f of negative x? That's what we got to calculate. We got to see, do we get this or do we get this? So, 
f of negative x, this just means we take the negative x and put it in the place of x. So that's negative x to the fourth minus two times negative x squared. All right, so all I did is each one of these x's I replaced with negative x. All right, so this is going to give me, well, negative x raised to the fourth. Remember, anything raised to the fourth power, that's going to be positive. Minus 2 times, and then squared, negative x times negative x is positive x squared. All right, now look at this. Do you see what I ended up with? I ended up with this, didn't I? With the same thing. I ended up with the original function, which is f of x, right? See, when I plug this in for x, I ended up with f of x. And so if I end up with f of x, that tells me it is a even function. Okay, now let's look at the next one. So same thing, you just got to evaluate the function at negative x. So that's negative x cubed minus negative x. So all I did is I took each one of the x values and I replaced them. So I replaced this with negative x and I replaced this x with negative x. And then here's this minus sign, okay? All right, so this is going to give me negative x cubed plus a negative and a negative. That's positive. All right. Now, let's see what I've got. Well, after I evaluated the function at negative x, did I end up with the original? No, I didn't. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing you check. When you plug in the negative x, Say, okay, did I end up with the original function? No, in this case I didn't. Okay, so now factor out a negative. So if you remember, when you factor out a negative, all that does is change the sign in front of each term. See that? It just changes the sign of each term when you factor it out. Now look at this. I've got what? This negative, and then look at this right here. You see this? Oop. I have no idea right there why I put x cubed. That should be x. I mean, why I put x squared, that should be x cubed. All right. So you can see here how I ended up with the original function. Okay, and the original function is f of x. And so when I did f of negative x, I ended up with negative f of x. And what happens? See there? That means it's an odd function. So this is an odd function. All right, let's look at this last one here. We've got f of negative x is equal to, all right, so each one of these x values I'm going to replace with negative x. All right, and so this is going to give me x squared minus 3x minus 5. All right, now just go down the list. Is this the original function? No, so we know it's not even. So now let's factor a negative out. So that's going to leave me with negative x squared. Remember when you factor out a negative, it changes the sign of each term. Okay, so I factored out the negative. Is this the original function? No. So that means it is neither. Right. 
and that and that that's all it is really to finding to determining if a function's odd or even. You plug negative x in first. See if you end up with the original function. If you don't, factor a negative out. And after you factor a negative out, see if what you have left over is the original function. If it is, it's odd. If it's not, then that means it's neither even nor odd. All right. All right, so this is the last, yeah, this is the last one. Solve the inequality by reading the graph. Okay, so, you know, it's, I, I think I think that's one of the most important things you should be able to do in a math class uh, whether you are going into math or not okay of course you know if you're going into math stuff like that then you know it's important to know how to do everything but if you're going into something that's you know that doesn't have a lot of math in it then as far as graphs, I think that's one of the most important things you can focus on, you know, if you're not in uh, in a field that is big is big on math, where there's not a lot of math in it. Because at some point in time, you're going to have to be able to look at a chart or a graph or something like that and be able to read it. And that's where that's where this comes in. So we want to solve this inequality. This right here, this is the graph of y equals x squared minus 1. That's this graph here. It's a parabola. And look, see? The graph of x squared would be right here, the vertex here. And this minus 1 just shifted it down one unit. So if we look at this, we want to know when is x squared minus 1 when is it greater than or equal to zero? Well, look at this. So this right here is the is the uh, x-axis, and if we move above or below, that gives us our y value, right? See, we can move up one unit, that's our y value. Down one unit, that's a y value. So we want to know when are the y values positive, right? Isn't that what that means? If it's greater than zero, we want to know when are the y values positive. Well, you can see this part of the graph. You see that? See, all of these y values here are below the x-axis, so those are y values that are negative. And then you can see this part of the graph and this part of the graph, the y values are positive. All right. So the solutions here would be, well, if we look at this part of the graph, that's, see, this, this graph here, it keeps going up forever, but it's also going this way, right? It's doing it slow, but it's going to the left too. I guess it would look kind of more like this if you graphed it. It's going to the left. So our solution would be from negative infinity to negative 1. Now that would be negative infinity. Now do we have a parenthesis on the negative 1? Or do we have, oh goodness, what happened there? Or do we have a bracket on the negative 1? Which one is it? Well, it's going to be a bracket because it says or equal to, say the, the or e greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so this is our solution from negative infinity to negative one, or, and then from what? One, and that's going to have a bracket because it is included because it can equal zero to infinity. And there's your, there's your answer. So I hope this made sense. Uh, check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.